everyone already knows what startup power in BL Heli does, affecting the power that it uses when starting from a dead stop and also influencing throttle changes while the motor is actually already spinning. But just how big of an effect does it actually have? Since in the previous video we saw that the current spike on large throttle changes isn't influenced as strongly by the load on the motor as it just is even unloaded, I did this test going every two values of startup power in BL Heli and test it with a motor unloaded. You can see the test program is very straightforward, become uh, at idle and smoothly ramp up to 25% throttle, and then we punch to 60% throttle. So we're avoiding any possible issues with uh, low RPM protection. And we're still getting a nice kind of mid-band throttle jump to take a look at. Here we're looking at the RPM charts for all of the tests. I think it's important to make clear that everywhere that we don't expect to see any differences, we, we don't. So all of the steady state RPMs, it does not matter which one we're on. And even when we're smoothly ramping up, all of these are performing exactly the same. So this is a sort of noise that we would anticipate to see. This is not uh, these differences we see here are not because of startup power settings at all. And also if we look at the braking zones, it has no impact at all on braking. But if we look at the acceleration zone, very interesting, I thought basically all of the settings perform acceleration wise exactly the same, except for the one absolute lowest setting, the 0.031 startup power you can see does have a dramatically slower uh, rpm response compared to all of the other ones but it doesn't make a big difference even if you go between 0.063 startup power to 1.5 all of these are still spinning and accelerating at the same speed now if we go to the amp plot follows exactly what we saw on the rpm plot one trace is definitely being held back the amp draw is lower doesn't reach quite as high of a peak, uh, and that's the 0.031. Um, but basically, all of the other startup powers have the same amp draw on a hard acceleration. Really, the difference between these is more to measurement noise and variation between individual tests than anything that, that I would say is, is directly related to this stuff. So there's actually not really a very big difference between any of those settings for throttle changes at all. However, you can see on that lowest power setting, while the amp draw is slower to kick up, it still comes to within like, what, 10% of the, the peak draw, and it maintains a higher amp draw for longer because of that, but the area under each of these graphs, so the, the difference between this curve and all of the rest of the curves, this little white gap in here versus the area under these curves, this is much smaller. So even though it has a higher amp draw for a longer period of time, overall for this entire move, the lowest uh, startup power and only the lowest startup power is actually pulling less power out of the battery. All of the others are drawing basically the same power regardless what you have it set to. But if we go over and have a quick peek at where we really expect it to have the largest difference, where the motor is stopped and coming up to our idle value, still very interesting that the individual startup powers don't really change at all how much amp draw there is even when starting up. Basically, no matter what the setting, the, uh, the startup kick here is only hitting about 1.4 amps or something like that. But you can see that a lot of these results are, are kind of clustered all here together. And you can see where they, like for instance, in this green trace, which is the, uh, the 0.063 setting, it kicks and kicks and kicks and it's not sinking, it's not sinking. And then as soon as it sinks, then the amp draw backs off and, and returns to this, this low idle value right there. You can say the same on the, uh, the absolute lowest one as well. Well, it tried here, but it doesn't kick quite as long, but it still does not start up nearly as fast as the other power settings. This one is delayed by, you know, about 300 milliseconds from, from this point in time until it's stabilized at an idle. So what if we take a look and focus just on this aspect of it? So here's the next test, just ramping from zero throttle. So the motor is a dead stopped 
and ramping over five seconds up to five percent throttle so ramping from zero to idle and we can watch and see at what point the motor actually starts spinning and the uh, ESC syncs with it so here in this single result test you can see that point right here where just as soon as the uh, the motor command starts rising uh, it begins to to the ESC begins to kick the motor and obviously it wasn't able to sink here and so it dropped into an idle period gives it another kick and then you can see the rpm spikes up here and then it returns to a, a stable uh, stably starts to follow the command and the amp draw uh, drops as the sink settles in so if we look at the results for all of the settings you can see again that some of these settings definitely start sinking a lot earlier than others like this pink trace here which is the 1.5 amp setting takes the longest to actually settle into a smooth uh, consistent idle during this whole section we don't have any hits from the uh, the rpm trace at all so it's not spinning and not triggering and then it kicks really hard it ends up being spun quite fast and then the ESC has to regain control of it. You can also see that the uh, red trace is the lowest power setting and that also has a little kick right here and the same thing all through here we don't have any activity from the uh, lowest power setting and it only begins to spin right here uh, just shortly before actually the 1.5 power setting kicks in. And what you're seeing here on these spikes is that thing where the motor judders back and forth and then stops and, and doesn't continuously spin and so that's the result of the that ESC kicking and not being able to get it spinning or sense that it's spinning and, and keep it going so all of this here is where the uh, the ESC is just spiking it with power trying to get it going um, but even though we have activity from the RPM trace it's not controllably spinning this fast this is all desync area under here the the ESC is not synced to the motor and as you adjust the startup power, you can see a very, very distinct difference in how the motor behaves uh, in that very, very low power, that low throttle range where it can't sync. When you have it set to 1.5 uh, startup power, if you're giving it a command of say like one, not 1%, one, um, the motor has no way of syncing, but it judders really, really looks like it's almost spinning and it's flicking very very strongly and as you reduce the startup power that flicking gets less and less and at the normal startup power the 0.125 that generally is recommended to to use it still it doesn't look like it's moving but if you touch the motor you can feel it vibrating uh, just trying to to move just with with lower power if we look at the amp results from this sec same section of the test you can see how the peak amp draw even during startup is all basically the same sections of wild draw here where it's trying to kick the motor the motor into action before it stabilizes and here like here the uh, yellow trace the 1.25 like if we focus just on this you see we have a kick here at the very beginning and it didn't sense anything and so it went returned to idle and waited for a, a pause before it tried again kicked it again and then we was able to catch something and it worked really really hard to keep it spinning and get synced and we're still, you know, this is a, a half second here that it was juddering it with really high uh, power draw before the draw settled down over time to a, a, its more reasonable idle. And if we look just at the lowest power draw, the 0.31 or 0.031, you can see it started, it didn't find it sink for a very long time either. Uh, this was one of the slowest to actually spin up at full speed, had a large kick and was unable to sink went back idle, had a smaller kick, and then was able to catch it the second time around. I noticed the same thing on the highest power draw as well. Uh, it, it did not kick the same way. Uh, we get this, this kind of odd uh, amp draw profile from here, uh, and then just a final a big kick at the end before catching. But both of those, the, the higher amp draw and the lower, or the uh, higher startup power and the low up startup power, all seem to actually start spinning consistently uh, slower than uh, the more medium startup power. Here if I overlay the highest, if we just look at the highest and the lowest, you see that final kick and that smoothing down to, to normal idle there, you know, it's just about two and a half seconds. 
if I overlay the 0.125, you can see the kick that actually gets the motor going happens almost three quarters of a second earlier. And here we have a lot of jetter, but this is actually spun up and uh, the ESC is under control. So if we go back to the RPM charts and just look, uh, say just at the 0.125, you can see that range there where we have a, a messy RPM and we're not stabilized yet, and then we stabilize here at two seconds. And then look at the surrounding ones. Obviously, if we go to the lowest power, you see that, you know, obviously in here we had a whole bunch of uh, uh, a kick in here that didn't accomplish anything because we didn't even get an RPM trigger uh, and then it ended up starting and coming into a stable RPM much later. If we go to the absolute highest power setting uh, we can see it's settled into a stable RPM even later than it was before and you can see how much faster that kick actually got the motor spinning uh, even though it was still not controlled yet. Um, but we can see that you know, having it set too high or too low doesn't really help us any. And actually, these medium values are, are some of the more consistent ones. So they're going one step lower than, or uh, well, two settings uh, in Beale Heli lower than uh, 0.125. Uh, it has a lot a smoother uh, start. The motor doesn't start moving at all until a little later, um, but it has less. There's less drama. It comes up to speed, and although it is slightly delayed from the other. Um, you know, it's not uh, juddering around while it's trying to start up. And if we go to the uh, one higher, where you can see here, it's you have a lot of uh, kicking and vibration in this large section here where it's desynced, um, but still trying to find its its idle, and then uh, it settles in at just about the same time. So uh, from what it looks like in here, we go to the higher power level, we see the same thing, the sync sinks at just about the same time as the other, um, but because we're going to higher power, these this desync section, the motor is spinning even faster, even though it's uh, desynced. We go up to uh, 1.0, same thing. We're syncing at the same time, faster uh, desync section. So the uh, 0.125, even for, for startup, does seem like a, a pretty decent middle ground. We don't really gain anything by going to higher power levels, except it seems to uh, have a harder time syncing the motor. And there isn't a lot to gain by going to lower, the lower power levels, uh, unless you're going all the way down to the lowest setting where it does look like you actually have a an overall reduction in power draw uh, during these fast throttle changes, uh, but only during fast throttle changes, mind. If Remember that uh, this entire section here where we're doing a smooth ramp, you can see again that all of the difference in that is all down to noise, and uh, it doesn't matter if you're not hit, uh, getting a massive punch in throttle response, if you have a, a smooth throttle action where this amp draw section here is only about 100 milliseconds or so. It's not a, a super slow rise. Now, of course, to double check, I did run some of the tests with a prop, uh, and I put the heaviest prop, not uh, thrust, but the heaviest weight prop uh, that I had to put the biggest uh, load, inertial load on the motor and see how that affected the results. And everything trues up with what we saw from the unloaded tests with the, the broad one. Here I tested the lowest, the highest, and the normal power settings, the 0.031, the 0.125, and the 1.5. And uh, you can see here's this is the RPM chart, and between the the 0.125 and the 1.5, that they're tracking exactly the same RPM. Uh, there's really no speed or performance difference uh, between them, and the absolute lowest throttle one, uh, or the absolute lowest uh, power setting, uh, does have a reduction in response time. Uh, it, rises uh, has a, a lot slower rise to our commanded value and the difference uh, the, the like the biggest difference here is it's like about 20 milliseconds or so so not insignificant but I thought also very interesting even though this is much uh, re the response here is much sharper it still has this really long tail where we don't hit our target RPM until like 180, mil 180 milliseconds or so. And if we look at where that target RPM is for the, f the uh, normal startup power, you can kind of see that this, this lowest startup power, even though it is a slower response, is still hitting the target RPM 
at just about the same time. So even though the initial response is slower, they're actually coming together at the same time. So this is still about 180 milliseconds or so before we hit exactly the speed that we, we told it to, no matter what power setting we're using. And here we can look at the uh, amp draw for the same test. You can see the amp draw for uh, even the, uh, the 1.5 and the, the 0.125 is identical. There's really nothing in it. Uh, and the lowest amp draw, you can see why we're having this much slower response. We have this, it's, it's kicking up and holding back and then kicking again and holding back. Um, and just like we looked at with the unloaded tests with, with all of them, you can see the exact same thing. We have a very large area here under there and a, and a very tiny area under this area of the graph. So the lowest power setting there is saving us amp draw overall, even though its peak is still only about one amp lower than the peak that we hit with the uh, other setting.